Special thanks to all our patrons who support the show every single week. We couldn't do it without you. Head over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today for bonus content, exclusive happy hour live chats and more. Patrons, you help keep the run, eat, drink podcast going. And we're so grateful for you. Not a patron yet? Join us today at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. Help support the show by using our Amazon affiliate link. Anytime you shop on Amazon for running gear, food, beverages, or anything else the little gray trucks might bring your way. Just use runeatdrink.net slash Amazon anytime you shop. It costs nothing extra. It's only one extra click, and it helps us keep the lights on and the bandwidth flowing. Just go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon, and we thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Alan, part of the Runcation Nation. You are listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Hope the miles are easy, the food is good, and you hydrate with the beverage of your choice. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Dana, it is time for another runcation recap. I am very excited for this week as well. You're always excited when we do these because we get to travel virtually through the runcation nation. Virtually and vicariously. Vicariously, virtually. And today, we... Alan to our show for a Runcation Recap. Alan Young, welcome to our show, and thank you for coming on to recap a race with us. Oh, thank you. Yes, we're very happy to have you here. I feel like we're a little bit, oh, I'm in awe as I see this. It is, I can see you are... If I get this right, in our exchanges of email and messages and and Facebook, you are a perfect Walt Disney World marathoner. You and you did Disneyland when Once Upon a Time. Once Upon a Time. Did you see what I did, I did. there? They had a marathon challenge, which included a non Disney race. Is this true? Yes, nineteen ninety five. So I feel like we're in the presence of running royalty. Yeah, this is a little piece of run Disney history here. And I love and, it. And Alan's the living spokesperson here. And and for those that are, are watching the video stream, that'll be for, for our uh, patrons. You can see behind Alan this amazing set of mm-hmm. medals that he's got in a case on the wall there. And, I love it. and there's a lot of history in there. And then that certificate that's over his shoulder as well. Alan, could you, could you, we're going to, we're going to get to that in a minute. But before we, <laughs> we get into all that cool stuff, could you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and your background outside of running and then how you got into running? I did some track in high school in the late sixties, early seventies. And in part because nobody else wanted to do it. And you couldn't get kicked off the team. And <laughs> hey, I, I have never been very athletic, and I've never really, when I've ever tried out for something, I've never gotten into the sport. So I, I've been washed out of baseball, basketball, virtually everything. But I was traveling to school, and I read a story. I believe it was in an airline magazine about a male that was running the Boston Marathon, and his training was two miles. A day and he finished and at that point he got some of the boston stew which they've subsequently oh. discontinued and then i went to school in boston and i went out and i saw the marathon and i went out and drove the course and it took me a couple hours and all i kept thinking about is this is a very long way and i didn't think i was ever going to do it and then i went to school in chicago and i watched the chicago marathon a couple of times and again, I thought that was a long way to go from basically running around Chicago and finishing up in the near north. And then I started working in 81 and 
I really didn't have a lot of, uh, and so I decided to, to start jogging for exercise, weight loss, the convenience, and I thought it would be relatively inexpensive. And a secretary at one of the societies suggested I do a 5K, signed up and did a, a 5K for $15, got a pair of socks that uh, the logo washed out in the first one. And I think <laughs> registration was around 10 or $15. Ran the race, felt terrible, decided I was never going to go any further than 5K. And for a little while, I only did 5Ks and then finally just benched up to 10Ks and halves and then started doing, uh, I did a first marathon in the early 80s. So that was about it. So what was your first marathon, Alan? Uh, Long Beach. We, I did the oh. Long Beach Marathon and... Initially, it's funny, in the first marathons that I did, or first, there weren't any medals. Oh. So Long Beach, you got a keychain. I did one, the LA Marathon, initially, all they gave is a coin. And I did the Honolulu Marathon, where they just gave you a shell necklace. There was no medal. Oh. I, would that motivate you, Dana? The shell Those necklace things, huh? would. The coin would. I'm a challenge coin person so. yes you are well, yeah the, the coin one was interesting because so many people got the coin and just tossed it on the ground because they were looking for the metal and i think the next year all they did is put a coin on a chain but it, it really wasn't very <laughs> no no um, this is your metal here <laughs> i can't wow. believe it <laughs> and the shell necklaces were funny because you could go to the the stands in waikiki and just buy the same because there wasn't any, there wasn't any markings that it was part of the, the whole race situation. I don't know. You're gonna have to get back to me. On I no. I that would still motivate me. That okay. Yeah. I'm okay. We all know that I'm bling driven. So. You are. You are. I am. I run for the bling, but I also run to eat and drink and beverages, both coffee and non-alcoholic, mm -hmm. and I guess all of the above. Uh, the including occasional the occasional spirit, the occasional spirit. But so that leads me to our topic for this evening or morning or afternoon, whenever people are listening to or watching this recap, what race weekend is a must do that people absolutely need to sign up for that you're going to recap for us on the show and why? I would have to say it would be the Disney World Marathon weekend in January. Oh, a little close to home. Thank you. All right. Yes, we're three hours away, so traveling will be easy for us. For no, us. no, no, no. <laughs> but now, okay. So what? We've had Dawn recently on the show mm -hmm. and we asked her why she did it and she has she had her reasons but what i want to know is why is it so special to you i found the race in the new england runner when there was print magazines and my wife had been running for a while and we decided it would be a good place for her to run her first marathon so she did in 94 mm -hmm. and the whole weekend has grown so much that I don't think they ever expected anything like this to happen. And the only kind of analogy I have is when I went to Hawaii one time and I went out to watch the rough water swim. And this was when it was just basically the rough water swim. It was from the Nautatorium to the Hilton Hawaiian Village Dock. Mm -hmm. And it's a 2.2 mile swim. And I never imagined they would put that together with the bike around the island and the Honolulu Marathon to start the Ironman. Right. Uh, and even when they first started, it's, it wasn't a joke, but the guy made the trophies in his garage, and they just thought that it was going to be like one of those things that may not happen that often. And then look at what the, the triathlons have become. Yeah. The same thing with Disney. They had this two-mile run on Saturday with a one size fits all t-shirt. All we did is run a couple of laps around world showcase. And I remember running it with my sister and this guy goes whizzing by us. And then 
he passes us and he must have lapped us three times in the first mile. And she goes, he's fast. And I said, that's Alberto Salazar. <gasps> no, you really? did You were on the course with Alberto Salazar? We we're on the same course, but we were definitely not breathing the same air. <laughs> <laughs> that's like us running with Marco Chisetto. Oh, the, I know, uh, right? In, in Alaska. Or oh, in 94, they had Joan Benoit. They <gasps> had... Uh, they had Boston Billy. They had Bill Alberto Rogers. Salazar. It was amazing. Do you have, did you happen to meet any of these running icons? Yes. <gasps> I met John Benoit a couple of times and I got to meet her after her, her victory at, in LA. And that's how she doesn't remember me, but I got her autograph. I was, I've watched that marathon at least half a dozen times from start to finish. And all I remember about it is she was worried about having her bra strap showing and she went into the LA Coliseum. <laughs> really? At that point, there weren't a lot of, there weren't any sports bras. That's, yeah. yeah. And just How remember that, that the 90, 1984 Olympics was the first time that women could run more than 1,500 meters in an Olympic event. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Even when I went to college, Women weren't allowed to run Boston. Wow. And they had to sneak in there like Catherine Switzer oh, like that Catherine we've had Switzer. on the show, like Bobby Gibb. That was her predecessor. And I could, well, I'm sorry. I could just go on. I'm sorry. I just, he said those names and I was like, wow, I know who that is. Then you can laugh at me later. I, okay. There, Alan, you probably have heard, you've heard this tale of a hundred times of, on the show of Amy uh, fangirling about Joan Benoit. Uh, yes. Now, normally we would ask you about the registration process right. for this race. However, my understanding is that you have a rather unique registration process for Disney Marathon. You yourself. Weekend. Could you talk a little bit about what that's like for you in particular? Sure. After the 25th running, they gave us, we've gotten stuff almost every five years, the five, 10, 15, 20, and 25 years. And it's been fantastic. And 30th was no different. But for the 25th, we got registration for life as long as we keep running the marathon. So we get a, a special link sent to us and then we register and we don't have to go through the hassle of registration. There's no stress. No, There's no. This is an instance where membership has its privileges. privileges yes. And I'm still a member of Club the Club Run Disney. Oh, are you? We just signed up today for a springtime surprise. Oh, interesting. Now I, okay, that's going to lead me to a kind of an unexpected question, but okay. I, I'm really curious. Yeah. I think you're the first person we've had on the show who has signed up for, for Club, Club Run, Run Disney. Disney. Yes. What prompted you to elect to do that? We still, Grace is not a legacy for the marathon, and we still wanted to shoot. I don't want to go without her running mm -hmm. as long as she wants to do it, and she's she loves to run. And she's much, much better than I am. Aww. She's beaten me by two hours and 38 minutes. Wow. Oh, so you all don't run together in your uh, races? or She's run with me the last couple of years just to, to keep an eye on me and to make sure that I was physically okay. Mm -hmm. And the, the registration for the legacies, the invitation goes out to like, the legacy or the perfect goofy and dopies. And I think princess oh. and wine and dine too. And, mm -hmm. and even Disneyland because uh, we're legacy runners here, we got a, an invitation to register. Wow. The difference is we get the, we don't have to go through, we get this link, this magic link to sign up, but we do have to pay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So but that's half the battle. Now we have talked about run Disney races on the, on the show previously. Sure. And some years registration is smoother than others. Admittedly. That's fair. I, I think it depends on whatever company they may have be working with for their back end. Usually it's usually the, the hang up comes where the, the servers get choked and people are just waiting forever to get through the online queue. That's mm. usually the problem. That said, 
off the top of your head. And we've also talked about the the registration fees for Disney races. We have. There tends to be a bit of a Disney tax. Would you agree that it's a little bit on the pricey side for a run, Alan, for this particular race weekend? It's all relative. I, know. I, I think it's relative. I've run Boston and Boston was expensive. And some of the races now get get are pretty pricey. And yeah. I think Disney for what they do and mm-hmm. and how they protect you, I actually don't think it's a bad deal. No, because I think that you would be a fan of safety first, of Dana. Course. And of I course. think it's it takes a lot to put on such a well run and well executed uh, race weekend. Hundred percent. The police that they have to hire in order to keep the roads safe, the medical personnel to keep everybody safe on the course physically and health wise, no risk there, and the entertainment, the bling which you are which bling driven of. for, and also like the shirts. Mm-hmm. And just generally, like the if there's an after party involved, or like the entertainment that you see in the pre race and post race, and I think there's a lot that goes into what they do, and their execution is very, it's very well done. So that's just my there's yes, it is more expensive, like Boston, like major race weekends, but it's I think. Worth it to do at least once. Oh, 100 to have that experience. Yeah, don't misunderstand me. Mm. And I think Alan might agree, given the number of medals I'm seeing. There. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I think that there's a lot of little things that are, are really great about this race. For example, we're running all on Disney roads. They pre-record announcements when we there's caution to the runners. They do the course at least once or twice the night before we go at it. There's mm-hmm. a lot of protection on it. Mm-hmm. If they tell you that there's water or an electrolyte or a substance that they're going to give you or maybe a banana. Nutrition. Or the candy stop before, almost everybody gets everything that they're entitled to. Yep. It's not like they go, yep. the first 2,000 people get it, and then after that, you're on your own. And that's happened to us in a lot of races. Oh, sure. Yeah, it can be. We, as back of the Packers, we have gotten to where a water stop is completely broken down or something like that. So it's nice to know that Disney will support the back of the pack type of runner mm-hmm. and and really celebrates, you know, up to the very last person that crosses the finish line. So right until the balloon ladies cross. Yeah. I mean, they celebrate the balloon ladies. <laughs> we've we've gone out to watch the last people finish at least five or six times. So much so that a couple of times we missed the bus and ended up having to walk through Epcot and World Showcase to get to the hotel, and oh. which they're not real happy about us in our running gear. And, and we stink. <laughs> but it, it's great because the last person, it's literally they're cheering them on. They have the confetti. There's usually a golf cart loaded with stuff just to make sure that they're okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a, I don't want to be that last person, but it's not bad. No, there there are perks. I don't think I, I, you're finishing at Disney and you're the last one. I think it's awesome. You know what they call the last person to cross the finish line there? A finisher. I was going to say a, a finisher or an marathoner. A marathoner. Darn. Exactly. That's so much better, Alan. I like it. So I, do they tempt you to come back year after year to stay perfect with the bling? Or is it something else that continues to motivate you to stay true to that kind of commitment year after year to maintain that perfect status at the marathon. I I think basically the legacies and especially the people when they talk to them, they've asked them that question. They've asked them, why do you keep coming back? Mm. And Most of them say, because of tradition, they want to keep it up. And most go, how long are you going to do it? And most of us have said until we drop. (laughs) Yeah, And now because of the stuff that we were given, it's just been amazing. Because if you had asked me even 20 years ago, if I would ever have a retired number or an athletic ring or anything like that, 
I would have definitely bet against me. I would have never even imagined it. This is the longest Disney adventure that we've ever been on. And it was completely unexpected and unplanned and probably just by luck. Oh, I don't think it's just by luck. Now, there's, I... a, there's a lot of determination to keep coming back year after year and do 26.2. Mm-hmm. But I understand where you f- right. f- came into this. And it, I don't know, I, I guess I can see how it would seem like luck. But I think there's sure. a little more to that with your the stuff you're made of. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that many races have a charity attached to it. Mm-hmm. I believe that Disney's races are no exception. Do you recall, is there a, a charity attached to the race that's ever really motivated you or, or that you've had any kind of a connection with to for the race weekend? There's a lot. There's We're in a position that, that we help support some of the other runners and some of the other charities. Mm-hmm. But we don't try to raise money on ourselves. But mm-hmm. there's a lot of charities that I think are unbelievably good. And the first Disney marathon in 94, which most people don't know was team and train was the big charity. And that fund actually helped fund the research for Glee Act, which was for a drug for leukemia that had a, a tremendous success. It was the fastest drug that ever went from the shelf to actually being used. It went, I think seven years from start to finish. Wow. And it had a tremendous success rate. Now it's an older drug now, but we ended up meeting Dr. Drucker, who was the one, the researcher that helped develop that one. And it's been amazing. So to say that the races have not changed people is a gross understatement. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The other thing that's amazing about this race is how many people have been motivated to start running or just exercise. And it doesn't exactly. matter whether you're doing dopey, goofy, the 5K, the 10K, even the kids run, it's just, it's unbelievable. We had a talk when with some of the people when they decided to split the marathon and the half marathon, and they said, we'll probably do, we'll have a, maybe do two races, but we're not going to time it together. And, I, and they said, would you do it? And I go, no, because it's hard enough for us to do Sunday alone. Mm. And I said, how many do you think I'll do it? And they go, probably about 15. And just remember that Dopey started as a honorary thing. They started the 5K and the 10K, and they go, we're going to call ourselves the Dopey Runners. And finally, Disney said, we're going to make it official. That's true. Yeah, yeah I've heard that. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's pretty cool. See, he has all the good stories, all mm-hmm. the history connected, and I just love it. I love we it. We were asked to do the press conference for the first Disneyland half which was years after the Disney marathon. And one of the questions that they had is, do you think it'll sell out? And I said, it's going to sell out. I'm sorry. Yeah. I know we're looking back at that with what we know now, but that just seems, that's a crazy question. Of course it's going to sell out. Hindsight is 20. And out of curiosity, did it sell out? Oh yeah. (laughs) Oh yeah. Okay. So you have done the Disneyland races. You have done the Walt Disney World races. You travel across the country to get to the Walt Disney World races. So how do you recommend best traveling to get there? Especially, there's a couple of challenges. One, I think the time change really affects us because we have to wake up at 11 p.m. our time just to get to the start line. And then just getting acclimated because Florida's weather is very unpredictable. The first race, it was cold. We've been basically, I thought we were basically running through a a sauna. And (laughs) then that year that it was cold that I never thought. We got on the plane to come home and the the pilot came on and he said, we're going to, we're waiting to be de-iced. And then about five minutes later, he came on and he said, that this is Florida. We do not have de-icing equipment. We're <laughs> waiting for the sun to come up to warm up. The, and we're sitting there going, okay, we're going along with this because we didn't know. We're still- <laughs> it's true. And we've talked about the 
unpredictability of the weather uh, here yeah. during that time of year. And we totally. do get a few, we get a few, couple of weeks of winter and we get some days here where it can get down f- into freezing. And, and sure. a lot of people don't realize that. And this race is every year. Is It's at the same time of year every year, correct? correct. It, it's always been January. But then unusual things have happened. For example, we mm. ran the race in 94. And Monday, we turned on the TV and the local Los Angeles TV stations were on two channels. And it was because we had an earthquake and they were broadcasting. So we didn't oh. know what we were going to come back to because they showed this, one of the scoreboards for the Angel Stadium had fallen off. I remember <gasps> oh. that. Yeah. So that was the night before. The other thing that's happened is that we usually fly out United, Mm. but we've always flown out United. And one of we've been going so much that a guy by the name of Bruce, who's in the red carpet club now, the United Club, has put us on the same flight. So if we walk in there, he knows where we're going. And one of the flight attendants Grace talked to, and a couple years later, we're on the same plane, and she goes, I know who you are. And she goes... You motivated me. I went out and ran the Surf City Half Marathon. Oh, that's awesome. And one of the servers there, Grace talked to, and then we went back and ran into her, and she had just done her first 5K, and she was getting ready to try to go up distances. We don't know what happened after that, but so Aww. it's amazing how many people you run into over the years. Wow. That is fantastic. What Which airport do you normally fly into when you're flying there? Into Orlando, well, L.A., and then usually uh, so, Orlando. Because if we fly yeah. out of Orange County, it's there's no direct flights. Ah, okay. Oh, so you get so from LAX, then you have direct flights, and you don't have to worry about layovers and that. Correct. That's nice. Yeah, one thing, and then um, MCO. Yeah, a lot of people will do that, um, or they'll do Tampa International and then drive over. Um, oh yeah, I but, guess. So I was just curious which yeah. air, which airport you elected to. Yeah, well, that's nice because then you're not too far from being in the Disney bubble. Exactly. You know? So, and when you, so you fly across the country, do you rent a car when you come to Orlando? We have, but we rented a car primarily to go grocery shopping. Uh-huh. And we like a restaurant in, in celebration. So we go there because it turns out that restaurant was in the same hometown or same town where I lived in Massachusetts. And then they moved a couple of times and they ended up in celebration. Oh, very nice. Oh, what's the name of this restaurant? Town Tavern. Town Tavern. Okay. I just, so you rent a car, but not mainly to get around Walt Disney world, but to get outside of it when you need to like the celebration, like grocery shopping and that kind of right. thing. And I think uh, we, we like the transportation system. Yeah. And I think there's plenty. I was going to ask now, do you typically stay on property or do you, do you stay around in the area, but not on the Disney property? No, we usually stay on property. I like the Epcot resorts just because mm. it gives us a place to warm up and run. And oh. we don't really we don't really go to the parks that much because we basically go and just try to stay off of our feet and relax. Smart. Very smart. And we've talked about that as well. We're mm-hmm. fans of the, of that area for the resort. So that's yacht club, beach club, boardwalk, um, boardwalk those could be the swan and dolphin. Swan and dolphin. If you don't, if you don't do the Disney hotels, if you do, those are my Marriott. Those are Marriott owned. Right. Yeah. So am I, are we missing any yacht and beach and the, we're not nope. missing any. Boardwalk, okay. Yacht Club, Beach Club, Dolphin, Swan, Swan Reserve. Yeah. There you go. Uh, oh, Swan Reserve. That see? That yeah, see? Alan's got her back, right? So uh, what's your, f- what, okay, so is it like, I don't know. Is it bad if I ask you which is your favorite resort in that area? Or can you choose? You don't really have one. <laughs> the Dolphin The Dolphin hotels are pretty cold. But the yacht and beach club, I like the location of that. And yeah. They're nice. Yeah. But I don't. I really don't think there's a bad resort in that. In that there's area. not. 
No, it's I'm, true. It, it really true. is. I think is dependent on the theming that, you that, that you're looking for, mm-hmm. and then Swan and Dolphin really they, they're the least Disney. I think of options in that area, but they're very nice. Nonetheless, we have a little, we have a little kind of jaded view because (laughs) from where we live, we can go to our window and watch the fireworks at night. And on a good day, we used to be able to listen to Phantasmic. So it's, and then it's, so it's not, you just open a window, Alan. Disney stuff. He just opens a window. That's and, a good problem to have. And there he is. That's amazing. So now what about your tips for the expo and the packet pickup process? And I'm sure over the years you've seen it morph and change and things get discontinued and things get introduced. How? What do you have to share about the expo? In 94, there was no expo. No expo. That's hard to even you just, imagine. You went there. There was some Disney merchandise, but the Disney marathon merchandise was limited to basically the marathon, except for the shirt for the family fun run. Oh. That was it for that. And basically, there was a watch. There was a hat. And there was a pre-order sheet in the pamphlet or the brochure. And then... It basically grew from there. The merchandise now has been really blown up. The expos are huge now. Uh-huh. Um, a couple of things that I don't like is I don't like the people that are running in and just grabbing the stuff, and then it's on eBay in, in a few hours. Uh, right. I'm right there with you. But I think that you should go. If you want any merchandise, you should go early. You should go the first day. You should pre-order the jackets or whatever you want if you absolutely want that. Yeah, um, that is and for a while, sage there advice. Was the jackets and stuff, and they weren't even releasing the picture of the jackets until you got. So you had to basically get the jacket and not really know what it looked like. That is true for a couple of them. Yeah. Where we have signed up in advance to get them. Yeah, we signed up. We got it. We're like, we'll see what it looks like when it we get it. And it turned out it was great. Yeah. But uh, Alan hit the nail on the head. I mm-hmm. think uh, any of our recent podcast episodes where we were talking about race uh, a, a race weekend. If you wanted the closest thing to hearing me grousing about the Disney run, Disney experience was uh, we tend to not get there on the first day the expos open just because of work, because of work stuff. schedules. So we n- we're never there when the expo first opens. So by the time we get there on Friday, mm-hmm. it is almost always picked over. And like you said, some of those resellers, they get in there and they really, they make me mad. <laughs> It's someone yeah. bought the Citizen Marathon watch, which we didn't even know. And they were selling it for, I think it was at least five or 10 times the amount of the. I'm, anyway, the fun of the watches was that it was affordable. Right. Mm. But, and, but when they make it, when they make it like that and they're trying to resell it, 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 that takes a lot of the fun out of it. Yeah, for sure. 100%. So now you're coming from the West coast of the U S over here for marathon weekend, you already made mention of the fact that for you, you're basically having to wake up at what is your 11 PM for race morning wake up. But do you have any rituals or things that you try to do the night before night before the race? Yes. Which this is my wife doesn't like it, but I used to like to eat a couple of McDonald's cheeseburgers by four o'clock the day before the race, just really? because it was neutral to my stomach. Mm. Oh, okay. Things okay, that so you trust. I, I, we try to eat, we try to sleep in on Saturday as much as possible, but now we've been going to the half marathon finish just to watch some friends run. But oh. I like to have a cheeseburger or, or some fries or something, something that is fairly neutral. I don't try anything like funny mm. during that time. And we try to hydrate quite a bit during that week and to try to get it to sleep so that we can wake up at ridiculous times. It, yes. <laughs> it is it is the earliest wake up for a race that we do, I think. Yeah. Bar none. And when you wake up that morning, are there things that you do that are traditions or, or part of your pre marathon routine? 
Grace usually likes to have some coffee, but it's actually <laughs> a little too early for me for that. No, nope. because I don't want to wake up. And then she, we usually get some bagel or something to eat. Because usually what occurs is we go to the buses and try to get on the buses as soon as possible. And then I try to take a nap on the bus and then I take try to take a nap on the ground before we go. So I'm in the corral, but then I'm asleep. Interesting. Wait, I, I, I was going to ask you what yeah. you do for transportation. So you answered that question, buses. which is the buses. Relying on uh, the Disney transportation gets you there. And that's, that well, is one nice thing about the D- run Disney weekends is mm-hmm. they will get you to the start. Mm-hmm. Except for the second year or the third year where basically the first bus was the last bus in a couple of the hotels. So they oh. had a problem with that, oh. which they subsequently definitely corrected. But there oh, were good. literally people on the buses as we were going by that were jumping off the buses and trying to get into the, the corrals. Oh, <laughs> gosh. Initially, it was like a one gun start. Oh, yeah. Oh, no corral. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. And now they still to this day, they change the traffic pattern mm-hmm. year over year. Things happen. New drivers come. They don't know where exactly where they're going or they change. Yeah. So they sometimes have hiccups yeah. uh, with that. But generally speaking, race day mm-hmm. transportation is there. It's available. It's reliable. And Disney learns and listens to feedback. I feel like that they do. Yeah. So it's, and so uh, also, now we have corrals. And you might be napping in the corrals. Do you do you like the kind of the pre-race spectacle, the characters, the announcers? Do you does that get you in gear to run the race, or are you just happy to nap and then wake up when it's almost time to go? No, I'm thrilled. I l- I listen to all that. I want to get as much. I have an inferiority complex, so I want to get as hyped up as I possibly can just to be blown out of the water in the first mile when it's, this is a long way. <laughs> yeah. I never walk into this thing thinking <laughs> I got this down. I don't think I have it down until basically I hear the choir sing. Oh yes. At the finish towards the finish with only a little bit to go. Mm-hmm. Right. And so stuff has happened. I've fallen and torn off my number on the metal plate before Animal Ooh. Kingdom. I Ooh. fell once in ESPN. I went right down and just, I just tripped over my own feet. I've done Amy's that. magnetically I've done attracted it. to the train tracks at Disneyland. Uh, yes. Um, I am. And tripped over it's those true. and rolled an ankle pretty good. I did. Yeah. One of the most discouraging things that ever happened to me was on ESPN on the track. On the track? On the track. And this is actually on YouTube. I saw it. And the turtle was up there and the turtle was moving and the turtle was going faster than I was. Whoa, like an actual turtle? It was a turtle from the the, the water, but it was moving. <laughs> there is wildlife sometimes on the course. Turtles. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I okay. was going to ask you, do, do you, when you go, do you use, uh, uh, Run Disney provides a lot of services, sure. one of which is including gear check. Do you make use of that? And oh, if yeah. so, what's been your experience? Oh, yes. We usually try to take something, we usually try to take something for warm, something for cold, an extra pair of socks, and something for a snack after the race, just mm. in case we don't get anything or, or it's too late. And then Grace, wears bun huggers so sometimes she gets cold and so she usually puts on some sweats and stuff after the race Mm. so we definitely use gear check and that's always been reliable and very efficient i find they they have definitely ironed out the kinks in that system over the years i know the first year we did a run disney event it was when they were still doing the the wine and dine half marathon relay. relay And gear check at the end was a bit of a nightmare. It was like in the middle of the World Showcase. And they abandoned that the next year. Yeah. And their current lot. system now. The now parking lot. Way much, more spread much out. Much better. Much um, better. Yeah. It's good. It's all good. So I, on the course for the marathon, are there parts of it that are more challenging or less challenging for you? Yes. And I definitely think the area when we turn off and take the long road to Animal Kingdom. 
is challenging. Osceola and they've really, they've really done a great job of trying to get some entertainment out there. Mm. The first year that they had it, we basically did that turn to go to Animal Kingdom, ran to, as of yet, a not built Animal Kingdom, turn around and had to come back. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. And then we ran out to, I believe, what was supposed to be ESPN, ran around there and then ended up coming back. But there wasn't any ESPN. So we were done by the parks by the first 13 miles. Oh, really? No, no. Oh, that makes for a rough back half of the race. Unless they repeat or loop things over Ooh. time, if they've done it in the past. We had a, yeah, we looped there and then. They said that we were going through the first time for Blizzard Beach a couple of years ago, but we went through Blizzard Beach in the early years. And then <laughs> Boardwalk wasn't completely built the first time we did it. We did go through wow. uh, World Showcase and we went through the studios a little bit and then we went out to the Magic Kingdom. But as soon as we got through Magic Kingdom the first year, that was it with the parks. We oh, never, wow. And even when we finished, we just finished an Epcot parking lot. We didn't go through World Showcase. So... For me, the ramps, the exit ramps. Oh, the off ramps. The off ramps are the most challenging for me because I feel like I'm off kilter the during that time. Are there so the most challenging parts for you may be the roads in between the parks? Correct. Okay. I think the parks for me go by quickly and the clover loose around it. They're definitely challenging, especially for tired legs. Yes. But like the Green Army men are out there and they're yelling at you. I love mm-hmm. that. Basically. And, and as soon as you turn in towards, to, I mean, as soon as you get to mile 23 and hit the candy stop, you're pretty much home free. Okay. What is this candy stop? Because we've never done the marathon. Oh, there's a candy stop in right before you go into the studios. And they used to have, and basically one year they had something like Skittles and that was a mistake because people were, people were eating them a little bit and spitting them out. So uh, I ran through there and looked at my feet and it looked like I ran over a rainbow, but they usually have chocolate and you can get as much as you want to eat. They're very generous there. Oh, Oh, that's, I'll tell you what, a little hit of chocolate right around the last two miles of your race. That wouldn't be so bad. Is it? Is it? Is it? What? How many miles have you done when this candy stop appears? 23. 23. So you got a 5K to go, more or less. But it's different because for us, the miles in the park go by so quickly because there's so much to see. So once you hit that, you run through the Hollywood studios, you come out, there's a bunch of people usually waiting for you outside of, of the studios. You're running by the water. That mm. area between Hollywood Studios and the boardwalk, there's more people there. You hit the boardwalk, and there's a ton of people there. Yeah. Then you go back and back a house, and by the tram now, I can't think of the name of it. And then you get your final water stop before you you enter, and you enter right by England, make mm-hmm. a right, and then you cross over the bridge. That's the big photographer, and you're into France. And then it's just basically you can see everybody. There and everybody's cheering on. The great thing about a marathon, virtually any race, is that nobody ever roots for anyone not to finish. That's true. Absolutely. That is true. And, okay, which part is the most entertaining for you? You say the the parks go by in a blink for you because there's so much to see. And what... Who are your favorite characters or favorite things to see that you've seen in the past? Okay, this is really tough to say because I don't, I like looking at the characters as we've gone by. Mm -hmm. But in all the races I've been, I've actually only stopped for one character. Oh. Really? Okay, so who's the one? It was a Clydesdale horse in Disneyland in front of Walt's apartment. Oh, that's cool. (laughs) Oh. That's so nice. What a great memory. Yeah, that is neat. We don't normally stop for care, stop for characters. We we'll take photos as we're I running can't. by, <laughs> that type of thing. Um, I can't really. I would stop for Rafiki if I was ever fast enough to do it. <laughs> it's not that we don't want to stop, but I always worry about, I worry about the bloom ladies. 
I wanted to yes. have a T-shirt that said, "I do not fear the balloon, ladies. I have a pin." But they, that was. <laughs> I have a pin. I have a pin. Well, there's always that one person who thinks it's funny to costume as the balloon ladies and their shirts like made you look that type of thing. Have you seen this? Alan, have you seen these people who dress up like the balloon ladies and they're like yes. really fast? It happened to me. It ter- and I terrified ter- her. I was terrorized in that race and I had trained. I am going to tell you, I was so scared. hundred <laughs> percent. Uh, this is how stupid I am. I, one person ran by and they were dressed and they had the balloons and everything. And so they said, oh, I am. And I said, yeah, you're from up. And he goes, oh, I'm a balloon lady. And I it went right over my head. <laughs> nice try. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, my question for you, um, for those that haven't done Marathon Weekend that are maybe looking at doing Marathon Weekend, could you mm. kind of just give your overall impression? How do you feel about Things like on course support mm-hmm. is there is there enough? How are they on water stops? How are they on first aid? What could maybe a marathon weekend newbie expect? They put out the water usually on Thursday or Friday to get make sure everything is on the course and you have plenty of it. I'm not saying that they've never had a hiccup and they've run out of stuff, but I really haven't heard it and I haven't seen mm-hmm. it. And I'm usually I'm in the the middle to the back of the pack. And the core support is amazing. It's the only course I know that you have porta potties and flushing toilets, depending <laughs> upon where right. you are. That is true. There are, there are little hidden things like the people that are starting to drink in Epcot and really downing things before they finish. Because a lot of people finish with drinks on it. Mm-hmm. Some people take advantage of the rides. The core support is amazing. If there was one rough spot in the course, and it's got character, but it is rough, is when you run through Animal Kingdom and your legs are a little tired, because of the pressed concrete and the design, it's Mm. it's hard on the legs. And it can be really slick, too. If it's wet, yeah. Yeah. Yes. For sure. Are you one that stops to ride the rides? No. Okay, because I won't. (laughs) You almost did. I came this close, but it was like PR at Disney or a ride. I think it was the Tower of Terror. And I was like, no, no, I was just, "Mm, where are the balloon ladies? I don't know. I have to go. So, yeah. Okay. But now, are you one that relishes the finish line experience? And do you have, for somebody who has never done this weekend can you talk a little bit about the finish line experience what to expect and the party afterwards that kind of thing the finish at disney world is unlike virtually the finish in any other place it's not an extremely long finish line but you end up with this choir that's singing for hours and they're terrific and then you have to run around the planter and then you basically have this stretch and carissa John Pelkey, Bree Kelly, the other announcers do a tr- tremendous job of trying to announce everybody as they come in. Mm-hmm. Then you're given a medal. And for the last few years, th- th- you've got ears too. And then they wish you off to, or they whisk you off to basically get your the, the water or the electrolytes in your box. They do a really good job, but the finish experience is really well done. The medals are usually there, and even the legacy runners get get to another table for their challenge medals or basically the other medal for the, the legacy status. It's unbelievable. They have photographers, they you can pose, and they have a tremendous amount of medical aid. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever seen, except for something like maybe the Ironman in, in Kona, has to have a huge medical t- I think that they really, they look at virtually almost everybody come in and just to make mm-hmm. sure that they're not into trouble. Um, we never have to worry about going to the award ceremony because obviously it doesn't apply to us, but it's great. And then they have, they have merchandise at the end. They have family reunion areas set up. They have the buses to take people back to it. It's very well organized. 
Yeah, I have to agree. I, that's one of the yes. big things. And I was actually going to say that medical attention at the end, you go there, they've got people who, like, if you need your knees iced, they'll put the bag of ice on and, and they they'll will. wrap your knee with that bag of ice on it. It's it, it's really second to none. Really? I think. And Well, one year I, I, I had some muscle fasciculations at the end and I really couldn't stop. And they put me in that the tent. And uh, actually, the race director came up to me later on and goes, what are you doing in the medical tent? And I said, uh, you're just having some trouble this time. And I had two physicians, two med students, and basically, uh, it was terrific. I had great care there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm doing fine, but could you check the spot on my back? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's over. wonderful to, to have that yeah. there. Uh, fortunately, yeah, you don't want to have to avail yourself of it. Right. With right. all those medals that are on your wall yeah. back there in the background and all the years that you've been doing this race, do you have any... Uh, inspiring or funny moments or, or just you've already mentioned some of the people the running royalty that you've met mm. and any cool stories or interesting things that just jump out at you that you want to share with us i don't know if there's a single story except it's just extremely heartwarming to see the end of the race to see the people that either are doing it for the first time, never believed they could do it. Mm. And it's all kinds of body shapes. It, it isn't like one stereotypical body shape. And it's not the fact that most of the people are not going to, are not going to come in first or not going to hit the podium, but it's just a matter of, of, of finishing. Mm. And if you ever have a, if you ever have a bad day, you should just think about what happens at the end of a marathon. And especially Disney, more than any other race I've ever seen, you really should take a look at it as a lesson that, that people can do stuff that they really don't think that they can do. I think you two could do it. I'd run with you, but you'd beat me. No way. <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm telling that. you. But we... we Signed up and trained for it one year, and yes. the, the week of the race, we got the flu. And then I was like, that's it. I've never been more tired and sore consistently in my entire life training for a marathon. And then right in in 2020, we or end of 2019, we... It was um, 2020. You were right. Was it 2020? Yeah, because right we interviewed... COVID happened. We interviewed Chef Art Smith, and he's let's run it together. And I'm like, because ah, I had said I'm never doing a marathon. It was I'm in done. the midst of COVID and uh, of the pandemic, and we got him to talk about his running experience and food and beverage and things like that. And then at the very end of the interview, he said, "Let's run it together." And Dana, which and I have it on recording. He says, okay, if we're going to run it with Art Smith, let's run it. And then, of course, it went, it was then, virtual. The, yeah, then the world stopped. Yeah. So, so. that didn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's, that's running royalty right I, there. Just I think know. about it. I'm saying if we were to. Think about that. If we were to run it, I would have to try to keep up with Alan. I know. But all this talk of running. It does make me hungry. Does it make you hungry? It does. Yeah. Alan, where do you go to have a celebratory meal after you cross the marathon finish line? Where have been some of the greatest meals that you have experienced? What would you recommend for people who are coming to do this race? Must try places. Well, first, the drink that I love that we celebrate once a year drinking is that orange slushy in front of France. Oh, uh, on the World Showcase in Epcot at the country France, you do have to cross over a bridge. So hill work is involved, people, <laughs> unless you go the other way. It's a tiny footbridge. Yeah. But after but, a marathon, it probably feels like an overpass. <laughs> it does. And, <laughs> and the other thing is I can't use one of those champagne glasses, so I have to put them in a cup because I'm a little shaky. <laughs> you want to get the maximum amount of that slushy. Is for your so I think that's a smart thing actually. But we went for a post race at Art Smith's homecoming. <gasps> Absolutely terrific. We've been to the okay. boathouse. Awesome. We've been to Town Tavern. We've been to Shula's. 
She always did a ter terrific job. We had the biggest end cut I've ever had. It must have been close to 50 ounces. Oh, my um, gosh. We get the we gelato. It's one of those celebrations that goes on, but we don't have a particular spot. Mm -hmm. But Disney World is probably the perfect place to celebrate. And then Marath uh, Metal Monday is great, too. Metal Monday in the parks. Mm -hmm. And yes. only one year did they have Metal Monday that they gave um, park admission to the marathoners. One? Oh. Only one, you said? Only one. One year they gave, as long as you wore your medal, you could go into your park of your choice. Oh, come so, on, Disney. Bring that back. Yes. Yeah. That, that's what, I loved it for them to do that. And that was a, that was a hoot. Listen to us. Run. Run Disney and Disney. Bring it together. Bring that back. Come Bring on. Bring it back. But he's you the, some of the places you named. We've yeah. we've covered Chef Art Smith's homecoming Love on the it. show. We've high covered high, Shula's high, on um, the show. Thigh we, high chicken biscuits, yes. <laughs> it's quite tasty. And the ribeye at the Shula at Shula. And the French onion soup. Oh, so good. We're right there with you. And I, the boathouse. And the boathouse. I, and I like a, I like the lobster at the boathouse. So good. So I even like the buns, the biscuits or whatever they have at the boathouse. But yeah, those, I don't think on any of the restaurants you could really go wrong. I, that's what right? I like for podcasts in part because I, you have such a great description of food. We Thank try. You. We try to make people hungry, and then hopefully they'll enjoy their meal. There's, they'll think about it and plan it and enjoy it after the race. But th oh, that's a, such a high compliment coming from Alan. I thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and and we want them to choose places. Uh, we only talk about places that we like. Yeah. So we make sure that we're we're giving steering people in the right direction. And I'm glad that we have some that are, that have overlapped over the years. Now you okay? You talked about Metal Monday, and it seems like a very must do tradition at Walt Disney World to get your metal pictures in the in front of the castle is do you do that or do you have other specific traditions for post marathon you try to we we generally go to bed fairly early the night of the marathon just because we're still tired but we try to wake up early and just start moving around so mm. we can get our legs moving again mm -hmm. and we like to see everybody celebrate. And I can't believe the people. I've never done a goofy. I've never done dopey. But those people are just, they're amazing. And the people, you can see it in their face. But I've never seen an upset person walk around a marathon medal with a medal on. Them. It's just, it's not that way. Everybody's like cheering each other on, saying hi or congratulating. Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. I love that part uh, of any... Any Run Disney weekend after that, when you wear the medals and everybody is congratulating, talking in line about their race experiences and, and some of the inspiring stories or the funny ones or anything, that's, I think, an experience that you can only get there. A hundred percent. The closest thing I've heard or I've seen to people being or upset while they've got their medal post race is maybe they're all commiserating about race conditions. It's too oh, like hot. The it's heat too cold. Or the cold, the maybe. rain, yeah. that type of thing. Things you but, can't control. But that's, yeah, that's yeah. other than that. And, and that's really more of a bonding experience with your fellow runner. Also <laughs> true. I think. I, yeah, think. I tend, I tend to think more of a thumper mentality on that. <laughs> exactly. But in, in grace is done. Graces is only up to 44 races, and I haven't done that many, but I'm up to about 67. And in all the places we've run, it, there's nothing quite like celebrating at Disney after the races are over. Yeah. That's true. Even Boston, people don't wear their medals usually after the race. A couple were really? on the plane, but that was about it. Oh, that's surprising. Boston is so big, I would think that there would be like some pubs where you'd go to wear the bling and... I would. I would. Heck yeah. Yes. So speaking of, yes. of other races, yeah. uh, where are you planning to accomplish, explore, and indulge next, Alan? What's next for you? We're doing some of the local races. We're doing Surf City, the 10 Mile or Surf City. We've done the Orange County. The race that I really is Colfax in Denver. That's a great race. And they have great food at the end of that race. Like what? What? Like 
They have beer and brats. Oh, you're talking my language. That is awesome. And everybody gets a certificate and basically people were coming up to it. And it was funny because I, I ran with this person the last couple of miles of the race. And, it, it's, and she finally turned around and said, I know who you are. And then I was standing in line 10 minutes later and this with brought and for brats. And this lady turned around and said, I heard you finish. And I'm going, me? So it was, that was funny. That's, That's social awesome. media. But <laughs> if you ever want to check out a race, check out Colfax. Okay. Very nice. We'll link to it in the show notes because that'll be one that some of the Runcation Nation might be curious about. For we sure. have some people going for their 50 states. So if you have such a rich history with Disney and you're so active on social media. Where can people connect with you from the Runcation Nation? Because I think that you have a lot of great input, a great feedback that, that I see across your social and, media. And super positive. That's yeah. the other thing. Yeah. So. I'm on Facebook. I'm on what X or Twitter, but I really don't understand how that works. So I can't really tell you. One of the funniest things that happened was on Facebook. I was on one Facebook site and we were just, we were going up to the Santa Rosa half marathon and literally in our my throwaway bag, I pull out this Mylar blanket, which happened to be the Mylar blanket from the first Disney world marathon in 94, which was, it was a single, it was the single logo for the 94. So I took a picture of it and I'm running the half marathon. I come back and, I got 2,500 hits and then I got kicked off that Facebook site. And they said, cause you took over the Facebook site. And I said, okay, so I just quit. And I didn't know what I had done wrong. It's weird. Oh, some Facebook groups that people get very jealous or controlling or all that. Luckily we don't have any of that in the no. nation Facebook group. So we no. want to encourage everybody who's listening to please join. Yes. Um, so you'll definitely be able to see Alan on our Facebook group um, and he's yeah. on Twitter or X or whatever it's being whatever called. Whatever it now. is. Uh, Alan, what's your, what is your user handle on Twitter? If people wanted to find you. I, I don't think I have one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Primarily people find me on, on, on Facebook, yeah. I don't have a big following or anything, but it's just Alan Young. Okay, so we will. I will link to that in the show notes. In also. the show notes, yes. And uh, Alan, we have learned so much about you and about the history of this race weekend, and just first, congratulations on the what you call luck i call determination strength perseverance endurance and very inspiring we can't thank you enough for being on our show for supporting our podcast the way that you do and being such a valued contributor and member of the runcation nation so we thank you for coming on the show and we hope to accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. I'd love to see when you come to Disneyland. For oh, sure. We'll make that it's a, happen. It's a date. It's a date. It's a date. 100%. Have you ever been to Sabroso? In Garden Grove. Sabrosa? Sabrosa. Yeah, they had the yeah. best chili rellenos I've ever had. They, that is one of our absolute favorite Mexican we restaurants we've ever covered on the show. We love it. Yeah. And we can't wait to get out there and go again. Oh, and the, the senior, it's basically a, all family run. That place is a hidden gem. They're amazing. I, I can't believe you know that. That's great. We love it. The Chamorro. We go, uh, and the honestly, the last time we were there, we went every day for one I meal. I think we did. Yeah. Because we were out there for Avengers and we signed up for the 5K, the 10K and the half. And after every race, I think we went to go have breakfast. There. <laughs> At least yeah. breakfast. So. We've gone, we've gone post race there a couple of times. They're, oh. they're so friendly. They're so genuine. There. They're so nice. I love them. So there's a little bonus for the Runcation Nation. Um, for those that are watching the video, thank you mm -hmm. to Alan for coming on the show, and we hope that you guys are enjoying the video. For those that are listening to the audio podcast, thank you very much for joining us this week on the Run Eat Drink podcast. 
We will be back next week with some amazing food, beverage, and running news for all of you. We hope to accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We're having another great year thanks to your support. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We're at Run, Eat, Drink podcast. And on Twitter, we're Run, Eat, Drink pod. You can also give us a call at 941-677-2733 or send us an email at info at runeatdrink.net. Visit our website at runeatdrink.net and click on the subscribe link so you don't miss a minute. Find out how you can support the show at patreon.com slash runeatdrinkpodcast. Accomplish, explore, and indulge along with us. We'll talk to you next time.